Hey, welcome back baseball fans. I just had some uh, time here. I had the house to myself this evening, which I don't normally have. Um, so I'm going to get a couple of videos out here. I just did that unboxing video, but um, back on the Appa Master Game uh, tutorial series, uh, I've been getting some requests for um, information on these ballpark effects uh, that Appa sells. Now, uh, these aren't, um, this isn't part of the Master Game. Uh, because it could also be used for the basic game as well. I also I do use it for all my master game replays because uh, I believe it adds um, Some extra fun to the game uh, it adds an extra role uh, Possibly or the ballpark to see if um, Maybe the ballpark could take away a home run or an extra role on certain flyouts if the ballpark can add home runs if uh, on a flyout so um so when Appa calls these ballpark effects, um, it's not necessarily the um, the uh, takes an, it's not like affecting singles or anything like that. Um, there's no like dimensions that are factored in like um, like in some other games out there, like the pursue the pennant type games. But um, what they do is they do um, they do add some drama to the game, which uh, is is always fun. You know, if you could add some extra fun and dramatic roles to your Appa games, you know, that's always just a plus. So I'm going to try to slowly explain how these work um, because they can be the instructions in getting to understand how these work can be really difficult. So I mean, I could tell you. Um, I first looked at these. I think around like 2002. We were, um, App uh, player and myself, uh, we were looking at these rolls. We couldn't make heads or tails out of them. We were trying to look at the 2001 ballpark effects, and it took some time to try to like understand how these work. But um, what you do is uh, you get this chart that comes with the um, when you order the effects. Um, so uh, before each game, you have to determine if um, for each individual team. Uh, what the ballpark factor is effect is going to be for that team for that game. So you make a pregame role um, based on the um, they call it the environmental role. So I guess it's due to wind or whatever. But um, there is some slight variance in what you can get with this. But it's normally the same throughout a replay. Um, the idea behind these ballpark effects is uh, it's going to add home runs to your replay and it's going to take away home runs but how it's set up is it's going to ideally be like a net neutral so it, hopefully it'll like take away as many as it adds or adds as many as it takes away um, in a replay so um, what I do I'm my next game my 87 project is going to be uh, the Cubs at the Astros um, which, I mean, if you're thinking this is 87, it's the Astrodome, it's going to be very hard to hit home runs. And you're going to see App is going to be able to reflect that with these. Um, then uh, what I'm going to do is show you is another example of Houston at Chicago. Now, Wrigley Field for this particular year is a positive park. So you're going to get more home runs on flyouts, which is what you see saw a lot at Wrigley. Um, I guess you see a lot, or since I saw, I see a lot, you know, with Wrigley, with uh, balls flying out of the park. So what you do before the game is you roll one die, and you're going to look at this column first, where it says team home factor. And it's almost like soccer. You know, soccer always has, like, the home team first listed on the score when you're watching on TV. Uh, you always want to think the home team you get, you look at first. So let's roll one die and see what we get. So you got a two. Now this is Chicago at Houston. So you look at Houston's. Um, you find Houston on the chart here, and I rolled a two. And you look over here, and you find where the two, what range the two falls in. So a one would be negative five, and a two to six would be negative four. So since two is between two and six, um, Houston's factor for that game is a minus four. So you write that on your um, score sheet somewhere. We're going to reference that later in a second. So you know, we're going to go back to using that same die I rolled at two. Uh, what you're going to do is go across all the way to where it says park visitor factor. 
under Houston. So this can give you the park, it's called the park visitor factor. And so you see where the two falls in. So one to five is minus 13, and the six is minus 12. So two is between one and five. So it's minus 13. So just remember that for a moment. Then what we have to do is we have to add that minus 13 to Chicago's two. So remember, we're just using that one die roll. So, so we found Chicago and we're gonna go under the team road factor and see where the two falls in. So the two falls in between this one and four and then the factor is minus five. So Chicago is really going to be a disadvantage here. So what you do is you add these two numbers together, this minus 13 and this minus 5. So you have to be a little bit good with positive negative integers, you know, if you remember from uh, seventh grade math. But uh, you're going to get a minus 18 with that. You can also use your calculator if you don't like, if you're sleeping in seventh, eighth grade math. So uh, minus 18 is your actual result there. So you're going to write that on the um, score sheet under Chicago. So for this game, uh, the Astrodome is going to be a negative, what's called a negative park. So it's going to be negative 18, negative 4 for, negative 4 for Houston, negative 18 for Chicago. Now how does that play into the game? So what that means is any time a home run is rolled, except off of the L and M factors on the master game, um, any other home run that's rolled in the master game, uh, there's going to be a second roll you're going to make to see if the Astrodome can take away that home run. So let's start with Chicago to see what we have to do for them. So since they're minus 18 for the whole game, you find where minus eight for the 18 is right here under this flyout. And you're going to see uh, the dice roll over here. These are the dice rolls. So under 18, uh, what that means is uh, once you hit a home run, uh, you're going to roll again. And if you roll a 36 or less, the Astrodome is going to take that away and turn it into a fly out the center. That's where that 31 comes in. See that? So anytime you hit a home run, the Cubs hit a home run, they're going to have to roll a second time to see if that home run stands. Uh, you see it's a pretty good chance, almost like 50-50, the Astrodome is going to take it away. Which is pretty realistic, because you remember the how cavernous the Astrodome was. Um, now, since the Astros play a lot more games per year than the Cubs did at the Astrodome, since they play a lot of games there, they're going to have a lower um, figure, that minus four. So whenever the Astros hit a home run, um, you're going to double check those, but then it's going to be just a minus four for them. So uh, if they have to roll 14 or less after their home run, if they roll 14 or less, that home run is going to get taken away. So you first have to determine if a, the park is negative or positive for that team for that game. Um, one other thing with this, these uh, numbers, you could actually roll these every inning if you wanted to, uh, but you're not going to get that much of a difference. Um, it might roll range, and you might get like a minus 16 to minus 19, and this might be, you can see the minus 4, so you're only going to get with the Astros a minus 4, minus 5. Okay, let's look at a positive situation. So let's say it was a home and home, and then the Astros were playing at the Cubs. And let's roll again here and see what we get. Let's roll uh, the second time. I got a 6. Uh, on these factors, on these single die rolls, the higher the number, the better it is for uh, the home run chances for that game. So this is going to max out the home run possibilities for this scenario. So let's look at that six where it falls in. So first, remember I said you always look at the home team first. So you start the Cubs and see where the six falls in. So one to two is a four, three to six, that's where it is. So it's a five. Since the 6 is between 3 and 6, the factor for the Cubs for that game is going to be plus 5. So we're going to write that on our sheet. Plus 5. So Wrigley Field is a positive park for the Cubs. Okay, so remember keeping that same dice roll of 6, we're going to go all the way across to the far right column under the park visitor factor. And we're going to have the... Um, Look where the 6 is. So 6 is between 3 and 6, so it's going to be plus 8. And we're not done yet, you remember? So we have to add that plus 8 to the um, 
Houston's road factor. So let's see what Houston's road factor is. So Houston's here. Their middle is six. That's five. So that was eight plus five. So remember eight over here plus this one is five. So it's 13. So they're going to be very positive. Plus 13 at Wrigley. Wow. So what does that mean? Now it's a little bit uh, more complex on the positives. But this is kind of like interesting to kind of see how it's a wash. So like when the Cubs are playing at Houston, Cubs are at a way disadvantage. And you know, Houston has a lot less of a, a hurt, doesn't hurt them as much. But then it's kind of like a similar ratio if you look at it. So then Houston is getting a big advantage over the Cubs since they're on the road. So that's kind of interesting how the, that works out. And you're going to see that a lot with using these uh, effects. So now we know during this game uh, that Houston's a plus 13 and Cubs are a plus 5. Now if you remember on the negatives, we just had to keep in mind, uh, we had to make that extra roll on the home runs. Now with these, when you have a positive situation, uh, you're making extra rolls on um, certain die results. So um, and it depends also on the batter's card and also... Um, how many outs there are in a game so i'll give you the scenarios and i'm going to give you the most basic one first i'm going to ignore these first uh two for a minute i'm just going to go to situation three which is going to be like the most common one so this would be um when you're playing a game and you have um any number of outs and um let's take a look here and get this three points Let's just start, actually, let's start with situation two, because that's going to probably be the most common. So if, if it's like leading off the inning or if there's no outs in the inning, and if that batter has a first column uh, zero or two to six, but he doesn't have an automatic one in his first column, if he rolls a 34-31, which you want to visualize as a long fly to center, 34-31 fly at the center, um, that's going to activate a roll on this uh, plus 13 to plus 4, plus 5. Let's go back here. Now this is the most common one. So if you have a batter with an automatic 1 in this first column, any out situation, so anytime that batter, you want to think of that as almost like a slugger, like someone that can hit home runs, good power. Um, anytime that guy gets a 34-31, think of it as like a long drive to center. And there's a, the ballpark, uh, depending on the ballpark, that might turn that out, that 34-31 fly out the center to a home run. Now, you get the really super slugger guys, like the um, Roger Maris, those type of guys, J.D. Martinez, um, who have two first column ones, maybe like a 11-1, 66-1. They get to get the extra roll on any 14-30, which is like a pull to fly at the left, or 54-32, which is like a pull fly at the right. Um, so those are the flyouts to, you can just ignore these 14 to 30 scratch outs. I don't know why I did that 24 to 30, but I did. Um, for the really good sluggers, like the really, like the once in a generation type guy that have like three first column ones, they get three possible checks. Like anytime you roll 14, 30, 34, 31 or 54, 32. So what do you do to check? So let's just go back to the real common one where it's just a 66-1 guy gets a 34-31. So instead of being just a fly out, you can make an extra roll now since it's a positive park on the ballpark. So let's say I'm just recalling on the uh, Astros, like I like Glenn Davis. He has a 1 in his 66. So if he rolls a 34-31, uh, he gets to roll again on Wrigley Fields plus 13. So if you look at our chart again, where 13 is, so if Glenn Davis, he rolls a 34-31, uh, he gets that second roll. And if he rolls a 31 or less, see where the 13 is right here? It's going to be a home run. So he's going to convert that home, that fly out to a home run. So it kind of adds a little extra drama. Um, and let's look at someone like, um, say, an automatic one, say, Keith Moreland or something on the Cubs. See if the Cubs are a plus five. So if Keith Moreland rolls a 34-31, they're a plus 5, you find where the 5 is. 
and anything below that's going to be a home run on that second roll. So if he rolls a 34-31, remember, you have to remember second roll. And if he rolls a 15 or less on that second roll, then that's going to be a home run. So um, that's the best I can explain it. I mean, you can get the rolls. Like I said, uh, it's, basically, it's just more like home run factor. It's not uh, really uh, like singles or anything like that. But it's they do add a little extra layer of fun. And, um, you know, it's just a little bit of a fun part of uh, APA. So, hope you guys have a good evening and talk to you later. Bye-bye.